Okay. So we're going to start this restorative with a opener for the chest. So I want you to have your blanket and a roll at the base. So it's quite firm of a roll and it's near the wall. And when you're sitting on the bolster, since it's spine wise, it's straight down to the center of the mat. You're going to kind of straddle the bolster a little bit, have a belt that's unbuckled nearby and have a sandbag nearby. If you have a bag of weight, you're going to sit very, at the end, I want you to sit as far to the end as you can on your bolster. If you feel like it's awkward because it's so close to the wall, it's all going to change because of how your, your front line lengthens. Um, I think it will. <laughs> okay. So set your feet so they are probably going to touch the wall. Kind of like you're, um, you're getting onto a sled. That's what I think of with this one. It's like sled or something. I get set here. Okay. And I'm at the edge, and then when I lower back, I'm going to step my feet far apart so that the, so the space in my pelvis, you know, feels like it's kind of broadening, although I don't think it truly does when I do that. So I push away, so I use my lower abdominals, and then when I lower back, I want the, the bolster to be as high up on my back as I can, and that's not high enough. So I'm going to come up. I'm going to scoot farther down the bolster so I'm really at the edge. If you feel like, gosh, this is too close to the wall, well, push yourself back. Okay? Don't worry about it because you might find it is too close to the wall. But you have to slide back on the bolster so the bolster kind of pins your mid to upper back and lifts it up. So it, it's pretty weird feeling how it lifts up. You should feel like, gosh, that's a lot of work to get my ribs up, but I have a bolster to help me. Okay, so reach the legs down. If you need to roll to the side, come back up and reset. Keep doing it until you find that this bolster is high up at the back. So if you reach a hand back to your trapezius area, your upper back, the whole kind of, the meat of that area should feel like it's, it's lifting up, like it's tone, you know, it's pulled into the muscle. Right, but it's not pulled in and making your trapezius tighter. It's kind of, I kind of like this. I'm starting to think I like this better than I thought before, this pose. Okay, so take your time to get set here with the blanket under your calves. Make sure it's in a good spot. If you kind of unroll it a little bit, it's not going to ruin your good experience here, your zen. So I like a little touch of the wall. Of course, you're trying to get the pose so that you can savor it a little bit. So with that length in the front body, if it's not enough, you could, you'd could you have to come up again to redo it. You don't, you're not going to scoot down very easily on this one. You have to get the bolster so it's in that right spot. And when you add your sand, I know things are going to shift in your upper back a little bit. So accepting what might change and some of the perfection might leave, but you can work on kind of blooming the rib area, right? You want it to kind of slowly bloom and expand out. So the elbows are sort of a challenge here to have them. So if I lower my arms down, I like that concentration. I see it taught often with the arms spreading open, but as far as the science of the pose, the idea is to relax the heart. So usually that's below the level of the heart. But it's up to you. Some of you will even kind of stretch your arms even farther back. But I'm finding I want to work with this kind of as a, as a science project sometimes. So relax the thighs. If they're kind of trying to, to tighten and bulge, you want to let them release. So this could mean that you spread the, the calves out a little farther outwards on the blanket, even with the feet turning in slightly, we'd rather have that than turning them out over and over. And then settle into that inner environment, let your eyes rest, and just filter through the nose. Just start filtering. Right, we could use the nose as our primary filter. Depending on the environment you live in, it might be challenged lately. 
with the air. So here is good, a good experience with it. So feeling now if the upper back is pushing into the ground like the floor, that you want it a little lifted with the bolster. So this immediately brings the circulation to the upper lungs in the back space, expanding the ribs on the inhalation. And exhale, empty the lungs. Just pick up on what you feel in this position and all of them ahead. So we want to spend a little time in the shapes that we hold. Noticing what you could let go. And even what you could receive from the pose, right? The breath, the energy in the respiratory muscles. Okay, so feeling where the arms are. Now, if your arms are spread out, I want you to lower them so that you can access, if my arms are lower than the level of the heart, and I try to press them into the ground. Now, this is kind of the larger pieces of the arm, right? It's not like you're pressing the wrist into the ground firmly. It's the larger, the bulkier parts that are usually rolling forward most of the day. If they kind of round. So it, it, li it likely should feel a little bit awkward in this shape with the arm bones trying to stay with this. It seems kind of like an artificial uh, response to your, in your arms, not, not as normal as rolling them forward. So let's just experience that often here in the class. So you feel the shoulders motioning back. All they're doing is going to the earth. You don't have to do anything odd. Just let gravity have you. And then when we switch, we're going to go into a supported cobbler's pose with the bolster like this. Okay, so some of us, since we're, some might be taller and have to slide a little bit back, but I want you to slide the sand away first and then walk the feet in towards the edges of the lower part of the bolster. And then I tend to let my neck and my Lengthen back in my trapezius, that whole area is centering. And then bring the feet up on top of the bolster and the knees out. So the feet are up, the feet are now soles of the feet together, knees go out into a cobbler's pose. Some of you might push the bolster farther down, which I'm going to try anyway, because I think they're both good options for my uh, circulation. You don't want to pin it, the position, so that you're feeling, uh oh, too much back work, right? So if I have my bolster higher, my back tends to work a little bit easier with, with kind of agreement of length. Some of you might find the bolsters lower. So if it feels too pinchy in the back, you can always put your feet on the sides again, bottoms of the feet on the floor, and then just a little bit of lift, just tiny bit and push the bolster down and then try cobbler's pose there. Remember, once you keep moving the bolster downwards, it's hard to get it back up. So this is quite that reach on the adductors, okay? So if this is too much and you need something completely different, except for your back is on the bolster, you can lay on the bottoms of the feet on the floor and the knees to constructive rest. So they're together. It's quite opposite of the cobbler's pose, but it's a, a nice variation. Now bring the hands together, interlace your fingers, Try to move the elbows wide, like you, you reach the hands to interlace, like you're trying to pull the fingers a little bit apart, okay? So create that weave with the hands and push the palms to the ceiling. Feel the arm energy reach. It's only from the shoulder to the hand, right? It's not all the way into the upper back. So arms, inhale, arms reach overhead. Or slightly towards the back of your space. Doesn't have to be all the way overhead. And then 
holding that, the arms are off the floor, your shoulders are clearly down, but feeling the weight of your skull, maybe nod your head a little bit side to side, and study that movement of breath. It's different in this position than the first one. Right, the movement of the diaphragm is slightly challenged now. Okay, we're going to add the challenge. So when we move the arms back straight towards the ceiling, stretching the wrists a bit, bring the knees to point up. Careful because the thighs want to kind of uh, balance the movement from the adductors to the hip flexors. So when you step the feet onto the ground, bottoms of the feet down, you know, really feel, um, I like to visualize like this whole um, kind of cavity area in the hip flexor is trying to reach down. I know this is something I need to lengthen with. So I want you to try to stretch them down one last time, even if your bolster is farther down, even if you pushed it, it's not where it started. Stretch out the hip flexors here for a moment and feeling that you can just relax the pelvis, not trying to exert something unusual with your feet. Just let the legs be, okay? And then as you bend through the knees, you're gonna step your feet so they're slightly out, they're parallel as could be, but you lift up your hips and you'll reach your both of your hands to the bolster. And then you'll turn the bolster to horizontal Use both hands again to nudge it up. And I tend to scoot my hips downwards on the bolster, but you might slide it farther back. So you're going to get the back of your pelvis centered on your bolster and then take a ball. If your blanket's too flat, you could take one more fold. This is a challenge for me to have my blanket this low, but I know it's better for my neck. So I'm gonna to try to, to use my practice to help myself. Okay, so lift up the feet and place the ball between the knees. Okay, do all those little things you do so that you can sort out finding some relative amount of comfort, even with the situation you're in. Okay, because you're upside down. So the diaphragm right strengthens uh, because of that um, tension right now when you have that inverted pattern, a little bit of tension. So when I lift up, I want you to bring the feet to lift as well. Obviously the knees and the feet, you can't tell if they're in the exact same plane. But when you push into the ball or the block, whichever you have, see if you can manage that movement of the back muscles of the legs a little bit and move the knees towards your chest. Just be, be easy with it. So the legs are bending, okay? And then bring the legs back up to that shape, which would be kind of like table pose if you were face down, it's not that different. And then stretch your arms open. And I want you to move the knees towards the left side and then move them towards your left arm, okay? And then start to create this movement pattern. Knees go back, center feet are together and knees to the right, up towards the right arm. Feel what happens if you turn your head the opposite direction as the knee goes now to the left. You can either slow the pace down or increase it depending on what feels supportive for you. So supportive for some of us might be slower. For some, we like the heat that it brings into our back muscles. So get a feel when the movement occurs that the legs and the pelvis are going to work in tandem, but then this rib area, right, is it's pushed around too. Okay, so next time you come back in center, we're going to bring the knees in, remove the ball, and we're going to take a figure four pose with the bolster under us. Okay, so You'll cross the right ankle to the left knee. And when your left thigh, well, actually, they both are coming into your upper body, huh? You can either hold the back of the left thigh. If you feel like everything's falling into your upper body, that's, that's kind of the idea here, is the, the energy kind of accumulates upper back, okay? 
So you can hold below the left knee. I did a session the other day I was taking and the instruction was to hold the foot that was below. And I found it to be a little much for my joints, but it was interesting to try. There's always something else you could try with this, but finding what's really realistic for your right hip because it will it will bear it, right? So you'll feel if you push away, see if you can lower the left foot just to the floor, keep the right leg in the same crossing, so the right ankle's on the left knee, and then just see what happens with that right, the whole mobility in the femur and the hip joint is, is quite interesting. So just let the right foot relax if you need to kind of move it a little farther over on that left leg. The left leg is helping you mobilize. Yeah, so I have to find a good gripping position so my left knee doesn't swipe over to the side. Okay, so pressing into your left foot on the floor, use the bolster to help elongate the spine. And let's take both arms if possible back overhead and let them lay down. So you're not trying to exert holding your arms like off the ground, but just feel how this creates that length from that center body, breathing. Maybe close your eyes. Just feeling where the pelvis has its lift in the hips. And feel the belly move with the breath. Lifting and centering. You know, before we get a big hip motion here, feel how possi the, the possibility of the bolster being so supportive for you. So if my bolster is, well, it's clearly horizontal and I don't feel the whole bolster, right? But see if you can manage uh, the pressure down into that back of the pelvis, the tailbone area. See if you can feel that you're almost trying to do like a, uh, flex, flexion of the spine, like, you know, cow pose. So you're trying to move, move the tail a little bit under. Okay, the knee will probably lift up a bit. And then grab onto your belt, using both hands now. We're going to, with ease, not trying to reach down to your foot this way. I want you to find how your right knee swings towards your chest and you scoop up the right foot with your belt. Your hands are both going to kind of pull down as your leg goes up, and the left leg lowers down on the blanket. If you don't like that blanket under your ankle, you can swipe the lower one away. I kind of go back and forth with that one. So hold on to the belt with your left hand now, and then cross the right leg to the left. And just feel. You can kind of turn the foot a little bit out, a little bit in, the right foot with the belt, and find all these kind of curious nuggets of sensation in the leg, huh? You can let the knee bend, you can let the leg lengthen, the lower leg doesn't have to have any instruction. And the right arm opens out to the side. I use my elbow, my left elbow on the bolster, to bolster myself, okay? So that, and don't go too far with this one, if, especially if your, your groin is feeling this upper inner groin pinch. This is interesting because we've done some, some prep poses for this. So you might feel upper leg a little bit more than you, you would if you just went into this pose without any prep. So see if you can push into that right foot and you prescribe your intensity. So if any of these instructions, you need to pass on the pose or do something different, that's okay. Alternate poses are fine. Okay, now if your right leg is reaching, I want you to bend the knee. Okay, and as you come back in center, feel the right knee move a little bit out and in, and then let the right leg lift up. So the knee turns in and out. And then as your left foot goes up into the belt, both feet in, both feet upside down, okay? You're gonna slide your feet out 
and take that wide stance so it goes all the way up into the leg. I know it's down into the leg because you're upside down, but when you have your legs out, it's, I think it's, it's a vulnerable position for one, but when you push out with your feet, sometimes you just energetically use your, your feet on this one. But just feel how the energy is through the, the groins, right? The, the focus is on increasing that lymphatic flow, that drain in the leg pits. I feel like leg pit pose. Leg pit pose, LPP. Okay, now feeling that your back is safe on the bolster, especially since it's just the lower part, it's mostly pelvis. You know, some, some lumbars are involved here. And when you are moving out with the leg path, pull firm, push outwards with the feet. It's pulling and pushing. I think it's more pushing and then pulling on this one. So there's resistance. And now when you slide and bring the feet back in towards center, just let them be your part. You can let go of the belt. It, it could probably dangle. Probably going to be okay. And feel where the, the crease is at the hips. Okay, now as you let the knees bend, squeeze them in towards the chest, and you'll take the belt off and bring the left ankle to the right knee and try to go to figure four on this side. If your leg is not receiving it well in the beginning, you can start with figure four with the right foot on the ground and work your way towards, or maybe not. Maybe you decide this is what you're gonna stay with for 30 seconds or so. So it's two variations around the same thing. So you can start with the knees in or go with the one I just showed. But the left foot, you know, sometimes it doesn't feel as if it's going to flex firm on this, but it's the best, it's the most safe way to protect the knee. I think of this one as flexing is protecting my knee. So it's up to you. Of course it is. But as you feel the, the back line, especially the spine, hopefully that bolster gives you a little bit of comfort here. It's a challenging thing, though, to have your hips up. Okay, the right foot might try to, to do things, you know, flex and do twirly moves, but probably not doing much with it is better for the kind of the whole psychology of the pose here. Okay, now I let the leg push into my hands. I try to keep that leg pushing into my hands as long as I can go before my neck lifts up and then I let go. And as my right foot lowers to the floor, feel that left knee, well, maybe you don't feel the knee, but let it motion out and see what happens on this side, right? The gravity's influence likely is different in little parts of the leg here, or maybe the bigger parts of the leg, but really feel that left ankle hooked onto the right leg. Just let it be for a few. You can maybe wag your tail a little bit. Sometimes that's interesting on this. And it's also helpful to really center it. Like center it before it wags, okay? So that it develops that current of kind of resistance. And we're doing a lot of this lymph drain work. So with this, this pattern, these few minutes with this pattern, so just get a feeling of release in the spine. Okay, bring the left knee to point up and then taking your belt below the left foot. You can always bring your knees in so you can gather that easier. And then as the right leg lowers down, I like to find first that just lifting it up. Okay, so simply leg stretch, a good supta padan gustasana, right? So just a perfect reach up. Right? Doesn't involve um, yanking the leg over my head or anything. It's just that simple skill of upward, upward foot. 
Okay, the right hip is, is pretty comfortable. I'm trying to just let it be. Okay, now once you give the, the belt direction, right, you'll bring it together, hold the belt with the right hand. Be sure that the, the, the knee feels healthy with this. So if you feel this anything odd on the inside layer of the knee, you know, anything that feels like too jolty, take a little micro bend of the knee and also just observe how the inner thigh, you can keep lengthening it. Most of us know that that inner thigh area needs more length, especially with knee issues, trying to reach and stretch that. So cross the leg over, that left leg to the right. Feel that reach through the outer band of the left thigh, flexing the foot, breathe. Okay, the left arm can stretch open. You can let your head roll to the left. You can just simply sense how much the grip is with the right hand. And relaxing the back of the pelvis on both sides. Try to let it be broad so it's isolating in the leg. Leg isolation. You know, as you feel the, obviously the feeling, right, through one area that's busy. Feel if you can offer a little bit of bending through the left knee and noticing if you bend, if you kind of flinch a bit in parts of the leg, if you can really embody like full reach to the upper beam of the left, you know, side of the leg, the side beam, you might be beaming. It's a little bit warm on that side of the leg, likely. It's amazing what can warm you up. Okay, so now that we've, we've we're adding these important layers of our legs that are important for that lymph drain, and that was the inner leg, and now we're working on parts that you know, get gripping patterns that affect our hip and our backs. So let's bend to the left knee, and then as you bring the knee back in towards the chest, you can just slide the belt off your foot. I think we should use the belt for what's coming up here. So let's bring the knees and just let the legs swing up. You can shake them out, a little bit of dead, dead bug pose. But while you're there, with the legs still or the legs shaky, you're going to make a, a loop with your belt. So buckle it up. Sorry for the sound here. Wakes you up, doesn't it? If you're, if you're slumbering there. Okay, slumberasana. So take the belt into a loop. I'm making my loop bigger or smaller. Okay. So you, you need a, a not a very not a very big loop here. All right. So let's bring the knees in and bring the belt around our thighs. Okay. All right. So we're going to go into some more bridges, and I'm going to have the belt around my thighs. So if my thighs push a little bit out, it just holds them. They're not pushed together. Okay. So they're 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 the perfect space actually. This is going to work good for a ball to be between them. We're doing extra credit now for pelvic floor. This is a really odd one because you have this energy of a belt, so you kind of push out reasonably because you don't want it to like fall down. You want your belt to fall off. And then you have a ball between, and so you probably have an energy of pushing in. So they're both happening. Uh, your input is is pretty active here with, the, with your muscles, okay? So when you bring the knees to your chest, I want you to bring the hands to the bolster and then just push the bolster away from under the back of the pelvis. And then carefully on your back as it lowers down, you'll push the bolster now. If that other blanket seemed to unfold in a funny way, you might have to push it aside, but I don't think it should bother us on this. So feet on bolster. If your blanket feels too low, like I mentioned, anytime the blanket under your head, you can always make it a little bit bulkier, but don't overdo that roundness in the neck. 
So I want you to just be with the back of the pelvis, right? The, the tailbone almost feels like it has a has a tip on this position because your energy in your legs is kind of a sharp at the center of the back now. So when you push down to your feet, yeah, remember those things with the yoga mats where you pull them out apart? I kind of like that idea in this one. So I'm going to reach back to my mat because the blanket, gosh, who knows what would happen if I pulled out. <laughs> it might separate. So I'm going to lift up my hips into my bridge pose. And I've got two actions with the legs. But I'm going to spend the energy on pushing into the ball, squeezing it a bit. Because I don't want to lose it. All right. So let the arms lower down by your sides now. And the palms are going to just turn open. Now, I think you probably have a tail on your belt, right? You got an extra part of the belt. So you're going to slide that belt down underneath the back of your, well, under, underneath your rear, sort of, below you. You're going to hold your belt with your palms open. Seems like a good way to hold it. And walk the hands in as, be re realistic. Don't overstress your shoulders here. So just hold the belt with palms open. See if you can be, just slowly work on this. Roll one shoulder down and in towards the spine, then the other shoulder down and in towards the spine. And I think the cue of down and then roll it in is a good one. Right, not rolling in and then trying to move it down. So the neck gets a great amount of length. Okay, lower the hips down because you're probably tired. You could use blocks to hold you up on that, huh? Okay, so we're going to alternate. We're going to inhale, lift up the hips, hold the belt, make sure you're not holding right under your rear. It's a little bit to the side. Exhale, lower down. Okay, good breaths on this one. Inhale. Lift the hips. Who knows, maybe the belt is holding your rear when you lower down. It could be like a little net. And then it bounces you back up, huh? Let's do a couple more of these motions. Now, the legs could be getting fatigued here with all this action through the props. Okay, but the next time you do surge that lift up, I want you to go slow, slow, slow. Okay, use that resistance on both sides, right? The ball being held and the belt holding you. Okay, use the belt. This is important that you're using that belt, not just the one around the legs, but this is the same belt, I'm assuming. But the belt that you're holding with the hands, try to pull that apart a bit here and see if you can firm up the arms. And then when you do that, be careful on the neck, not turning your head. You may have to, I suppose some of you do, but see if you can let the neck lengthen here. This is not a good one to have a lot of blanket under your head. Okay, all that work. Good for the pelvic floor here. So relax the grip with the hands. You might just slide the belt so it's not underneath you. And then when you lower the spine down, I like to let my hips move a little side to side. So I kind of think of it as scribbling across the spine. Spine scribble back and forth, back and forth. Or spine drizzle, I don't know which. And then I want you just to center down here, let the pelvis, you know, you feel the back of the pelvis gently pressing. Okay, just gentle. And then you're gonna squeeze the ball. Squeeze, bring the knees to your chest, remove the ball. Now let's try this. So you've got your belt, okay? You're gonna loosen it just a little bit so you get a little bit more room to move. And when you lift your hips up, you're gonna put the ball into the right buttock. And you're going to actually let your body weight lean, relax into the ball. You're going to do at least a little of that. Otherwise, it doesn't massage it. And you move the hips back and forth. Okay. So it, remember, you're not trying to like push extra weight into the ball. It's just your natural body weight. Right? Massaging into the right glute. And then the belt should help you a little bit here. It should keep it in line. So you can't get too off course here, having the belts around the legs. I kind of vary on this. I, I think the belt actually is helpful, but an extra thing to remind people to do. 
Okay. So feel if your knees were right, your hips go left, and then just how that ball goes to the right side of the hip there. Then push a little bit and move the hips back center. Move the ball to the left buttock, remember, so it's glute, kind of medius, it's center and up, upper. Well, the buttock's only so big, so it's just center and upper. But you're gonna have to put the ball. And then as you move back and forth, if you for, don't have a ball, um, you can always do windshield wipers. So your feet could be on the bolster, no belt, and let the knees swing side to side. That's a good option. But feel now when you move your hips, same thing as on this side, but feel how the knees work to the left now. And just let the body weight center on that ball, okay? And then as you come back into the center, push down to your feet, lift the hips up. Take a moment here where you use a block. Okay, ball goes aside, but the block comes in under the back of the pelvis, place the block at the second setting. And then I want to make sure that when you're on the block, lengthening the back of the pelvis here or widening it, you have a little resistance with the belt. If you have zero resistance, make sure the block is centered, it's on the floor, it's not wobbling. Bring the feet off the bolster and tighten it up. My belt is, I like to make the belt closer to my knees because what I'm trying to work with is the health of my knees actually with these poses. So healthy, healthier knees. You don't want it too tight, but when you lower down, it should feel like you can kind of rest the legs into the belt, right? Okay. Now, let the legs straighten down. So there's a little resistance, but it's not overdoing it. And then it probably feels like there's no resistance once your legs go that way, down to the bolster. So are you straightening them out? It's kind of interesting. So you can tell you can really tighten it up for that one. Right? If you pull it a little bit farther, it probably works better. So give a few moments here. If you don't like this leg stretch down on the bolster thing, I, I understand. You can always, again, make the belt tighter, but feel the front of the hips and there's a little bit of resistance. If anything, pivot the feet inwards versus trying to maximize that rotation. Press back into the shoulders, breathe. The hands could be down by the sides. Okay, now with the next few moments here, just feeling where the front rim of the hip is in that range of length. Okay, now when you bend the knees, careful, bend them. They're probably going to go at the same time because you got a belt holding you together. And then as you push down to your feet, lift the hips up. Remember, if the belt is like right around the thigh bone, they sometimes slide a bit. So just keep in mind, my belt's not in a good spot. So if I push it, it'll slide. So you want to kind of have it in the center. So slide the block out. And when we come down through the spine, elongate. And take a pretty firm squeeze of the back of the legs, careful with the knee pressure, back of the legs in towards the body. So you're pulling the legs in, squeezing. Okay, try to keep the upper spine long, all the way to the brain stem. Okay, now when we come up, you're gonna let the feet kick up. I would just slide the belt off of your feet I'm going to probably bend the knees a bit to do that. And then let's make the belt, actually, before we get up, so it's set, it's here on your back. You can just make a big loop. Go big loop. Okay. You can use your belt on your feet to help you come up. Most of us will find we just roll up. Okay. So when you come up eventually, we're going to go slowly up towards lifting. But we'll take our belt loop around your upper body, overhead around your upper body, big loop, and then we'll place it first. I bring it to my back. I don't think that's the recommendation every time. So I walk my feet up to my bolster. That's number one support. And I scoop up my feet with the belt. 
And then it looks like, it doesn't seem like it's tight enough, but once you get your feet up, remember it's gonna create more friction. So let the legs lift. If you tighten it up too much, then you have to loosen it again. But taking a Navasana pose, right? So understand that the inside line of the feet is, is going to, to grumble a little bit with this. But when you lean back, I want you to try to get the chest to lift. So maybe keeping that throat relaxed. Don't have to push the chin too high, but there's some space there. Okay, the arms could be forward, downwards, holding the belt. Some people like to keep a hold of their belt for this one. Kind of secures the balance in the back line. And you might rock back and forth. You might fall out. It could happen. So the challenge here, though, is that upper back. The nice thing about this version with the belt is that you can actually really learn some interesting things about the hip flexor, the hip flexors, the leg bands, and that kind of lower core bundle here. So that's what we're going to emphasize going towards. All right. So. Let's get a feel now when we bend through the knees and then hold on to the belt. Okay, now when you lower down through the feet to the bolster, I want you to reach the hands, slide them down the belt, and then when you come down um, to your feet on the ground, let's see how we're going to do this. This will be a whole different set we're coming into. I haven't done this one before. I don't. Maybe longer ago. Okay. Take the blanket behind you and quarter fold it. So make sure that you have a pretty, a pretty substantial folded blanket back there. If you want to sit on two blankets, it's fine. You might take your other blanket. We are going to be using that a little bit. So I would pull it from the other side, have it nearby for this intriguing thing we're coming into. Okay. So sit up on the blanket and Place the left leg out so it reaches out. It's like take the leg off and then put it to the side. <laughs> okay, left leg stretches out, right leg bends. You can put a sandbag on the right inner thigh. You can also put a ball under the right knee. Those are different options though. If you, you don't like how it feels on your knee, you don't use a sandbag and add terror to it. You put a ball under the knee and that's that, okay? But if you feel like, no, my leg is happy, I'm good. You put your sand on the top. Keep stimulating that adductor area, the groins, the leg pit. Okay, let's take our bolster and tip it up. I hope your bolster is not one that folds in half. Um, if you have a mushy bolster, then this might not work as well. Okay, just know you might you might have your bolster. Um, what I actually intended on this one was my bolster was at my at the wall, so I can have it like that and me, but. I'm not close to the wall, so. But if you want to do something really extra good, you know, you could get closer to the wall with the short end of the bolster against it. And then, you know, just it's a nice energy. So tip forward, bolster tipping, here we go. So lean into it and let the arms have that reach and lower your head between the arms. Yeah, go for that length with that side. Okay, so you could have it where your, your brain is kind of between here, right? Some people prefer to go into more like unicorn pose where you bring your forehead to the short end. I'm just a little bit leery about this base of the bolster kind of sliding out for me. That would be very good on my, my neck. So I'm good with the arms, but some people can set it up really nicely. So the bolster is secure. And yeah, if anything goes, goes awry, you can always get a hold of your bolster. So you decide. Give it a few moments here. And now feeling if your hands on the bolster and you're stretching through the back line, this is nice for that spine kind of security, right? You're using the ribs kind of shifting in towards the paraspinals. It just makes you feel like you're pretty, you're pretty strong, right? You got a lot of 
interesting positioning in the back, a lot of tone. So when you lower down the bolster, I want you to let your left leg lift up on it so the left knee positions and kind of rotates a little bit out. Lift up with the chest, inhale. And then exhale, turn left. Bring the right hand to the left knee and then rotate. So I want you to feel that there's a true rotation through the midline. It doesn't need to be spine, right? You don't have to say, oh, yes, my spine is doing this and that. But feel how the ribs have to turn, right? The, the fleshy chest turns here, right? So that's an important area to get turned, not roundedness. Yeah, and the diaphragm strengthens because of the resistance here with the abdominal um, muscles and organs, right? Probably more organs resistance when they twist. Okay, so as we go back forward, we're gonna go into sleeping sage. I can't remember when we've done this one on Zoom, to be honest. So I feel like we, we missed out on it. So we're gonna take our right, bolster besides our right leg. I want you to be sure your right leg is closest to the bolster on this side. So we've done the twist left, right, to the left, and now we're going to go with that left side reaching. Okay, so follow me. Let's see if we can do a piece of together experiment. So you're going to swing the left leg back, and you're going to pull the bolster next to your right leg. Okay, blanket two goes on the top of the bolster on the short, end of the bolster. You know, I suppose you could um, put a block under the bolster on this one too. I know you can. I know you can, I know you can. Um, so that's nice too. But I don't know, it's funny how people talk about, this is the more advanced version. I think the more advanced version is where you can actually let go. So if you feel when you lower down like this, it's too, it tugs too much on your, just it's just too tuggy. You can put a block under the bolster. We'll be here for a couple minutes on this one. So get yourself comfortable. If you get that block under and you go, oh, that's not a good idea, then take it away. The ball is an option under the left knee. The sandbag is really tough to get on your back when you're by yourself. So what I like to do is use the sandbag on the left thigh. I know the thigh has nothing to do with my back, I guess, but I like this coordination. So when I turn, remember, it's kind of a halfway full twist. I'm letting my head rest like I'm taking a nap kind of thing. Um, this should be called super nap. So I have to get that ball in the right spot so my leg is happy. And then as I lower down and I have my head turned to the left side towards the leg that's closest, the right leg. And feel if the block, I really like this because it opens my right side of my chest. When the bolster comes up towards me, right? And then as you center the right rib cage, which is what you're just turning when you're seated closed, just let that right rib cage center. And if you kind of look, move your left leg back a little bit, that could be good. Okay, you might move a little bit back and forth. You might get rid of the ball or use your right foot to help move it around. Yeah, this one doesn't seem to make sense that you would probably put your sand on your back, does it? Seems like that would, that would fall off. So if you have a block under, you can kind of hug your bolster. Gives you that lift. If you don't, the arms could be by the sides, palms open or palms down. Or holding the block. And just let the spine and the back muscles respond here. This is almost always a feel-good position. Gently stretching the front of that left thigh. Breathing. And exhaling completely. A 
Okay, now before the physical action happens with moving up, I want you to let the the feel of the length of the breath also be an, a feeling possibly in that right side of the torso to the right armpit as well. So there's some scanning and focus of scanning the body with the breath movement. The weight bearing in the right hip. Okay, now when you do start to come up, if you have sand on your right thigh, it might be best for your lumbar spine, even though it doesn't seem like it's on the lumbars now, but it could connect up there with pressure. So just slide the sand off the right thigh. Okay. And then when you shift your hands, palms down, you can bring the left knee closer to the right knee and then feel that you're turning towards the bolster to come up. And then when you come up and bring the left leg forward, take a moment where you swing the knees forward and out. Okay, so you're gonna switch through here. So get a feeling here so that we're gonna switch the legs. So I just encourage you to take both legs to kind of a, a wide, wide reach. This is realistic, just a little bit off the edges of the sticky mat. And then bring your hands to the bolster and lean down so that you can feel both lower layers of the seat. I feel like it pitches some pressure close to the back of the knee. So you might need to bend your knees here instead if it's too much pressure on the back of the knee. Okay, well, this should feel really kind of centering, not overdoing it. Okay, now when you come up with the heart, then heart lifting, and then bend the left knee, and then when you take the right leg to stretch out, you choose whether you put a ball under the left knee, it's another knee. So it might need some other, another, other kinds of help. You might have to find some resources for this knee. So you either have the ball under it, which is going to be quite helpful for the circulation, or you can put your sandbag on the upper inner left thigh. If it doesn't go right, it's, I guess you could use both the ball and the sandbag. Um, that's an idea. But if your knee is like up, it just doesn't lower, you can either sit on another blanket, that's another option, then the knee will likely lower down. But again, don't overdo it. If it hurts your knee, use the ball, use something. You don't have to use sand. But now when you tilt forward, you've got your bolster. You're gonna lean front, you'll probably lose your blanket. Just see what falls, what falls away with time. And then as you lean, yeah, gently motion the breath into the upper rib cage. If you're making a cape across your back, like ribs moving. I might feel like some interesting um, awareness across the upper spine into the neck. I find that kind of deep on this, even though I'm tilting forwards. And then if you're focusing too much on the upper back, you might need to let the inner thighs gently stretch here. Just let the right leg still feel like it's reaching out. Okay, now before we take the twist towards that right side, I want you to actually really feel how that right leg has its it's centering down, just like it's, just let it use gravity, which is the floor, right, to hold it. Nice to have a floor, huh? Okay, now when you come back, I don't think this block under here is gonna help me, so I'll move that aside. When I lower down my foot, I'm gonna stretch it across. So these movements in between are probably more important than we're giving her credit for here. So this movement back, right, I try to keep my, abdominals kind of hugging towards my spine when I lift the foot across. And so you can kind of hold awareness there. And then turn to the right, left hand to right leg. I know if you were to like go back in time with your last pose, because that time would have gone. <laughs> okay. You might have different ways of addressing the twist, you know, all different, you know, all places of the body. 
not just the waist, but the leg. So really work on lifting up the torso, turning the ribs to the right, breathing. Yeah, continue to emphasize that moving up, like that axis of the spine, spiraling up. Even if you don't twist that far, it's better that you have a kind of a supportive line than that you're kind of dropping into the twist like this, like pushing. So just feeling that you're basically up. That's it, just basically up. You'll be glad that if in 10 years from now, you can just basically be up, be upright. Okay. So feeling when the spine has that movement, I feel like my belly kind of stops its movement when I twist sometimes, so I have to keep activating, not just muscles of respiration, but muscles in the abdominals and the organs moving. Okay, now let's just keep going with this one. So we've already, we're already turning right. So you know, kind of like a little bit, you know, it's, we know what's coming next, huh? So when you come back center, take the sand, move it over to the right side of your mat, and then simple, we just take the right leg back. It's like we're going into pigeon pose, isn't it? So if this is boring, you can always do pigeon pose here. <laughs> okay. I'm going to put a block under my bolster and a blanket on top and then my sand on my left thigh. This might be too intrusive for some people with the sand there. Um, if it just feels too much and if you don't like the blanket under your leg, you can move that too. But I'm trying to find different patterns with some of these. I'm just feeling the, the bone's ability to center, okay, lower down the ribs. And then turn your head to the right and let the weight of your head rest into the bolster and the blanket if you have that support. Feel this right side of the torso stretch. The right side of the back should feel like it's supported. And if your right leg wants to go farther back, it's fine. Okay, we don't obviously want to try to kick it like we're going into the splits, but you want to get a feeling that your left side of the waist, the spleen, Releases down, arms resting. Just invest in your breathing focus here. Okay, now we're going to do pigeon a little bit pretty soon. So I want you to notice how the front rim of that right hip has its reach back, right? That torso length, right? And, you know, there's influence in the hip, okay, but it is front. So when you are centered down, take a few moments longer here. Slide the sand off the left thigh if it's there, okay? I feel that nice kind of reach through the torso, that kind of unraveling. Torso unravel. So this class could be called, huh? Torso unravel. Okay, now when you do come up, see if you can let your back move almost like you're moving into cat pose. You're going to kind of slide back with your paws pressing a little bit here. Feel that turn. And then bring the right leg to the left leg. I would just kind of toss the ball away a little bit here. And then placing the blanket that you have, you want to have this, so I'm going to put the blanket down and then turn so that your feet are at the wall. So we're going to turn around to that feet to the wall. Bolster is going to be on the side yard. And eh, you probably just need one blanket until the very end. So 
Take a blanket and fringes to the back. All right, now when you place your knees on the blanket, you want your feet right up to the wall. So you don't want the blanket too far away. If it bothers your knees or your knees are just bothered, right? Have the blanket farther back. So the knees are almost at the end, of the edge, edge of the blanket, not the end. And let the hands walk forward. I want you to round the back into cat pose, chin to chest, scoop the chin in. Inhale, arch. And exhale, press into your feet in a hollow through the core. Inhale, arch the spine, hips back, chest forward. Exhale, hollow, chin towards the chest. Inhale, arch. Okay, now as you shift forward, bring the hands to turn out. So you're going to turn the hands out and shift the hips down to upward dog. And as you lift up your chest, yeah, be, be gentle with yourself. You might find this is a lot to ask for, for your torso. So when you come back in center, feel that cat pose. So feel how you can pull torso in and up, round the back. And then inhale, lengthen, go slow. But there's no competition here. I'm getting into your upward dog shape. Upward facing. And then come back into table and two cat pose. Use the wall against the feet here. And then last time, inhale, upward facing, lifting the chest. Okay, add the hips here. So we'll come back to table. Actually, we'll first take the bolster straight underneath our torso. And this will be kind of pleasant. It's okay to have a pleasant thing going on. We'll come down to crocodile. I like the blanket under my head on this one. That didn't it? Even if it's moments. Okay, so I'm going to lower down. And this is where my elbows are out to the sides. You might have to push the bolster back if it hurts your chest. So everyone's gonna have to find out what works for their chest here on this one. And when you lower down, even if the bolster is under your thighs quite a bit, that's fine. So step the feet apart, have enough space at the feet so the back of the pelvis can relax. Head down onto your hands. And just let that back space relax. Still have a little bit of pressure with the feet. So you're stretching the bottoms of them. If this just bothers your feet completely, you can push farther away from the wall and not deal with that. Really try to inflate the kidneys here, like you're lifting up the wings of the kidneys, right? They span. It's a kind of a nice visualization, huh? Okay, now that the back has had a little bit of release time, we'll slide the hands onto the ground beside the bolster. When you come up, just keep it, take it easy, push back into table. And then we're going to step the right foot to the right side of the mat. So this is challenging when the knees are apart and they're wide out. So you'll bring your knees closer and you'll step the right foot to the right side and then pivot the bolster across horizontal across the mat under you remember you don't want to be too pushed up to the wall for this one with your leg you'll find out you walk your right foot toe heel toe heel so pivot pivot toe heel toe heel to the left and then lower down into pigeon pose so the right knee is suddenly crossed over to the side and the left leg is pushing a little bit into the wall and you can lower down to your blankets. This is kind of nice, or your blanket. And when you shift down, use the bulk of the upper body to help you kind of process this pose. I think upper body bulk is heavy, so I go, oh, I can feel my 
chest go forward, my elbows go down. And that gives me a little leverage for my hip because it's it's a bit of a there's a bit of, of pressure in the hip on this one for a reason. Left foot could move a little bit up at the wall and put the foot a little higher. You can do that. And you're wondering, huh, what does she mean by that? Well, if I bend the back knee and put the foot a little bit up, and if I even draw the back foot in towards my left leg, you can feel the opposition, right, with the right hip pull. Doesn't take much, does it? But that's not for everyone. That might be for you, but not, huh? You can try. So settling down with the elbows. Ribs move with the breath. We're getting a, a nice balance of leg poses today, a little bit of waist work, certainly some bridge poses stacked on each other, huh? Okay, now be sensitive to the the upper or sorry, the lower back feels like it's it's kind of broadening here, but the front of the body probably feels like it's dropping in that part of the, the opposite part of the pelvis, like the belly, like it kind of drops, which we, we wanted to in this pose to be soothing for the organs, but in some ways that's like prolapse, right? So when you come out, I want you to work with hands, uh, pressing a little bit and lifting up to the torso, stretch through that rib space up, and then let the right knee move forward and switch through. So you bring the left leg forward now, seated on the bolster, right leg stretches back. Okay. So really work this into kind of this, um, this intensity right through the hip. So left leg pigeon, right leg back. You can create a little bit of arch to start. You can lean down, down to the forearms. You can let that right foot push into the wall. Yeah, we're going to do kind of all hips. The next two will be hip, hip, and then inversion. So we're doing lots of hip, 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 hooray. That's what we're going to do. Two sets of hip poses and then hooray, legs up. Okay, feeling how the right foot pushes or it doesn't. Right, you choose. Sometimes activation is overrated on these. We're gonna stay focused on the left hip though, even when we come out of this one. So notice you're on left hip focus now. It's okay to let the front lower abdominals soften a little bit here on this position, especially before we do this next turn. That area be relaxed. Okay, now lean into the left hip. Now this time we can go off of the bolster. Okay, so you're gonna to tilt to the left hip and you're just gonna slide down off the bolster and then put the bolster towards the wall on the right side of your mat on the side yard. And I don't think I want that. We're going to bring our, our left leg. So that's what we just did. We're going to get it all together here. Lower onto your back, head on a blanket, and then left leg over to the bolster on that right side of your mat. The bolster is over there, I hope. Ball can go to the sacrum, and sandbag can go to the external left thigh, but it's really all up to you if you're using any of these props, these add ons. These boosters in your pose, pose boost. Okay, so I like to kind of slide the sand around that outer texture of my thigh, so I kind of texturize it a little bit and get a feeling. Of, okay, a little bit this way, that way, and then let it center. If it feels like it's going to fall off. It's not good. You want to make sure it's pretty well onto that left thigh. 
Now the right leg could be quite bendy, right? So you could bend the right knee so that you're resting more into the right hip. But the waist is turning again. It's been an interesting set today. The last few moments, the waist was kind of dropping down and now we're creating a rotation. So let your eyes relax. And these last couple of poses. Just feel where there's that filtering on the inhale. And relaxing on the out breath. Now slide the sand away, then make sure the ball goes away too. And at least from that side, and then move the knees to point up center and take the bolster to the left side of your mat. And then cross over right leg to left to the bolster. And then ball maybe, and sandbag, outer right thigh. So come into that second side. So there's quite a bit of that interaction with leg, like the limbs of movement, which kind of is what they are, I think. Um, you know, you think of those as your main walkers, right? But the psoas, there's other things that are walking, walking muscles in the body, right? So as you roll your head to the right, just feel where the kind of the, the bones are, what pile they're in, right? Because you position them in a certain pile of movement, and then it's your muscles that you're feeling, right? You are alive, right? It's more than a pile of the bones, but when you turn, you know, just notice what is energized in the body, what you feel there's activation in. And feeling that kind of fresh supply of circulation or blood flow into the areas, that's what's important about getting the lateral rotators in these stretches, getting blood flow there, which really affects like our knees, right? If what's above is really tight, it's going to affect our knees um, regardless. So giving those a stretch, a two-band. There's always a little further to release, right? There's parts of the torso you can feel our clutching with the breath. Your work is on really movement inside. Feel the natural movements of the breath. Even more than the sound of breath, but right? feeling natural movement. Now you'll slide maybe the ball first, maybe the sand, whatever happens to come to focus when you get out of the position, you change each time. But when you do, it's a good idea if it does change a bit each time. But when you do roll over, you can bring knees to chest right now and then roll to the side, up to you, right? I'm gonna roll to the side, I think it's a little easier in my sacrum. And when I come up, I'll place the bolster next to the wall but your thoughts may not be as important as how you feel, right? So if you feel like it's better to do go into this a different way, do that. Find what works for you. So when you sit up on your bolster, you're going to sit on the very edge. You're going to have your sandbag nearby. 
And if you like your other blanket or an eye pillow, you might add those too. And then you're gonna really scrunch up on the side to get the legs to go up. Otherwise you fall off on the other side. You still might fall off. And then get your hips back up on that bolster, the back of the pelvis. And let's take our Viparita Karani. So our inverted rest. It's actually called inverted action, but I think it is for this group, we're able to get to this now, this point of action with our legs. So when I place the sand, it could go to the soles of the feet that kind of intensifies that drain right in the legs since there's obviously a, the bottoms of the, the, our body, right? Fills up with, with retention, right? Fluid retention just because of gravity. So reversing that and activating that lymph drain in the groins, in the leg pit. Now it might feel like it's mostly back leg assignment here. So if you're not comfortable with it, you can always reset your, your sand a little bit, right? You can push your feet out on the sand so it's a little farther distance. Make sure the knees are not pushing together. Patella stay, stay in place. Okay, now let the arms relax. If you have any other props you want to use, blanket on torso, eye pillow, anything, another sandbag on the ribs, all up to you. All right, let's come into reversing that gravitational pull on the organs, so feeling that interaction in the abdominals with the breath. And let each of them settle. So the settling will feel a longer exhale is easier when you're upside down. And calming the heart, lengthening the exhale. And now finally, just where the limbs are in the upper part, feel that even though they're not entirely out to the side, you could slide them a little farther out. Some of you might have them down by the hips. And then feeling that kind of vulnerability in the center line of the body up to the heart. Relax the heart. This is considered a bit of a back bend, a chest opener, but it's, it's certainly head, your brain is back. Your heart is a little bit more open. Okay, now let's shift, so we'll move the feet away from the wall. Just shift them a little bit away so that your feet can still push up. You know, first visualizing the low back of the waist can lengthen. It has a little bit of time to grow into that right now, but it might be stunted in it. So feel that you push up with the feet, even with that resistance. And then as you bend through the legs, feel that collection your sand collection, and then you'll take the hands to move the sand or you'll toss your sand over your head, one or the other, and take the knees inwards, hold the backs of the legs. Yeah, feel that upper sheath of the back, that interesting amount of pressure into it, rocking side to side. Even though it feels like it's kind of sludge, kind of moving back, when you roll around to come up, it probably will feel pretty good. So rock side to side, give it a moment. It's just time. Okay, roll to the side and come around, just sit. Take a moment sitting up on the bolster with your back at the wall. I love walls as props. 
Okay, one wall at a time. Feel where your head moves back towards the wall this time. And possibly the shoulders down. Okay, lift the shoulders up on an inhale. Exhale, lower them down. Inhale, straight up. And exhale down. And finally, when you feel that move of the heart forward, lift up the hands and feel that the hands almost kind of bow in front of your heart. And as you inhale, exhale, bowing your head down to your own sweetheart. And gratitude. Namaste. Thank you.